I don't care what Fu says. My students aren't lazy. They're just overflowing with potential energy. That's right. Today we're talking about the role of energy in chemical reactions. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Chem and Atcha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, throughout the year, we've discussed energy a lot. Yeah, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about how that energy pertains to chemical reactions and go on a little roller coaster ride I like to call potential energy diagrams. So let's get started. The role of energy in chemical reactions, a lesson from the kinetics and equilibrium unit. Chemical energy, let's review. Chemical energy is a type of potential energy. When bonds are broken, energy is absorbed. Barf! This leads to lower stability and greater reactivity. When bonds are formed, energy is released. Barf! This leads to higher stability and lower reactivity. Barf! Most chemical reactions involve both the breaking of old bonds and the making of new bonds. The overall energy change of the reaction, known as the heat of reaction or enthalpy of reaction, takes into account both types of changes. If we take a look at the image to the left, we are first bond breaking. We are inputting energy to break bonds. But after that, we are actually releasing energy to make bonds. Okay, now we're comparing the two to determine if we're overall endo or exo. So because we only put a little bit of energy into breaking, but we released a lot of energy at the end, overall we are exothermic. Taking a look at the image on the right, now we're adding a lot of energy at the beginning to break bonds. Ah! But then we're only releasing a little bit of energy, boop, to make new bonds. So overall, this reaction is endothermic. Activation energy. All reactions require activation energy to get started. Some reactions can obtain it directly from the energy of the surroundings. Other reactions require much more energy, such as a spark. High activation energies lead to lower reaction rates since fewer molecules can cross this energy threshold. Shoo, what, what are you doing? I'm just trying to light this match. <laughs> Why are you waving it in the air? Well, because the match head's got to react with the oxygen in the air, so, you know, I'm just trying to get it going. Well, okay, that is the reaction, but you're not providing any activation energy. Oh, well, how do I provide activation energy well, to get it going? That's why matches come with this strike plate. This gives it friction, which provides heat, which gives it enough activation energy to start oh. that reaction. All right, well, let's provide the activation energy then. Huh. Nope. There we go. Amazing! So now that I understand everything there is to know about activation energy, and I know how to light matches, I think I came up with a really good analogy for activation energy. Hurdles. So if you had a really low hurdle, like in the top picture, it's really easy to jump over it. So lots of people can do that, and that's a fast reaction rate. But what if your hurdle is a little bit higher, like a real hurdle in track in the picture below? Well, not a lot of people are going to be able to jump over it, so that equates to a slow reaction rate heat or enthalpy of reaction. The overall energy change of a chemical reaction. It's represented by the symbol delta H, the difference between the heats of the products and reactants. We can write an equation delta H equals H sub products minus H sub reactants, or delta H equals the PE of the products minus the PE of the reactants. In an exothermic reaction, heat is released. This means that the products have lower potential energy than the reactants. For example, if 2H2 gas plus O2 gas yields 2H2O liquid plus 571.6 kilojoules of heat, heat is a product. And if heat is a product, it is given off to the surroundings. 
we write delta H as negative, 571.6 kilojoules. In an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed. This means that the products have higher potential energies than the reactants. Let's look at an example that's the exact reverse of the reaction on the previous slide. 2H2O liquid plus 571.6 kilojoules yields 2H2 gas plus O2 gas. Notice that heat is a reactant. If heat is a reactant, then it is absorbed from the surroundings. Note, this number does not represent the activation energy. It's the net change instead. We write delta H as positive 571.6 kilojoules. Potential energy diagrams. Let's talk about their general shape. PE diagrams represent the energy changes that occur over the course of a reaction. An exothermic reaction shows a net decrease in energy. An endothermic reaction shows a net increase in energy. Taking a look at the images below, we have two examples of potential energy diagrams. Now we're gonna break these diagrams down into great detail in the next few slides, but for now, I want you to focus just on that red line, where it begins and where it ends. So, for that first diagram, we start low and we end up higher. That means overall we've absorbed energy and we must be an endothermic reaction. Looking at the second diagram, we start out high and we end low, so we must be releasing heat to the surroundings. This means that we are an exothermic reaction. All right, so let's break down some of the different regions found on a potential energy diagram. Many of these begin with H, which stands for heat, but we could easily exchange an H for PE because heat represents the potential energy. So HR equals the heat of reactants. HP equals the heat of products. Delta H is the heat of reaction. HAC is the heat of the activated complex. EA forward is the activation energy of the forward reaction, and EA reverse is the activation energy of the reverse reaction. All right, we're gonna label the different regions on a potential energy diagram now. Are you ready, Fu? I am. All right, we're gonna take a look at the axes first. Let's start with the y-axis. What is it labeled as? Looks like I have potential energy and it's in kilojoules. Good, how about the x-axis? It says progress of the reaction. And all that means is that the reaction is occurring from left to right. It might also be labeled reaction coordinate or reaction pathway. All right, let's look at the general shape of this graph. Do you think this is endothermic or exothermic? Uh, well, looking at the beginning and the end of it, it starts high at 40 and ends low at 20. So we've given off energy to become lower, so that means it must be exothermic. Good, let's label that at the top of the diagram. This is an exothermic reaction. Okay. All right, what would the reactants be in this reaction? Uh, looks like A and B is what I start with. Good, A and B. That's over on the left, that's at the beginning of the reaction. Okay. Now, we want to label the heat of reactants. That represents the potential energy on the y-axis of those reactants. Now, just like if I were to measure your height, I'd have to go from zero to the top of your head. We wanna do the same thing and designate a y region for A and B. So we're gonna go from zero to where the reactants are to label our heat of reactants. Okay, so just an arrow between that and zero. Very good, so it's 40, and we're gonna label that with the symbol H sub R. Okay. That means heat or potential energy of reactants. Right. Let's do the same thing with the products. We need a Y region to tell us the energy, or potential energy, I should say, of the products. Where would that be? All right, so the products are what I end with, so it must be C and D over here, so the error would be right here. Good, we're gonna label that HP for the heat or potential energy of the products. That would be a value of 20 kilojoules. Okay. Now let's look at the overall energy change. That's the enthalpy or heat of reaction. What's the net change here? Um, so I start at 40 and I go to 20, so I went down by 20. Very good. Right. Now when we do a delta, it's always final minus initial. So mathematically, if we go final minus initial, what sign will we have? It'll be 20 minus 40, so it'll be negative 20. Very good. Now let's label the region that represents that change between the reactants and the products. Okay, so it should just be between those two lines. Good, and I can really put it anywhere on the x-axis as long as it's between the 40 and the 20 on my y-axis. We're gonna label that delta H for heat of reaction. Okay. And let's just put next to it that it's negative to remind us that this is an exothermic reaction. All right. All right, let's talk about that big hill in the middle. Okay. That big hill, it's a really high energy, right? 
That represents what we call the activated complex. That's that intermediate in our mechanism that has a lot of energy, it's really unstable, and we actually have to get to that before we continue to go down to low energy to make our final products. All right, so let's label the heat or potential energy of our activated complex. What region is that going to be? So that's all the way from the top of the hill down to the bottom. Very good, right. That whole amount of energy is our heat of the activated complex. We're going to label that H sub AC for activated complex. All right, a couple more things that we need to label here. We want to label the activation energy of the forward reaction. Now, if you remember, activation energy is the energy we need to start a reaction, but are we starting at zero? No, we're starting at 40. We're starting at 40. And we got to actually get to the top of the hill before we can really get this reaction going. We have to pass that hill before we can make the final product. So the region that we need to sort of designate in the Y region for the activation energy of the forward would be from our starting point to the top of the hill. So where would that be? Okay, so we started at 40, the hill is up to 100, so from 40 to 100. Good, it'd be 60. Let's actually draw that. We're gonna label it EA, E sub A, with an F in parentheses to specify that it's the forward reaction going from left to right. Okay. And I like to think of this as a roller coaster. We're not really starting right on the ground, we're starting up high a little bit, but then we have to go up. It's that click, 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 click. And then finally we hit that peak and then, ah, we go all the way down, right? You okay. gotta go up that hill first before you complete the reactions. That's how you can remember what the activation energy is all about. Makes sense. One more thing we're gonna label, that's the activation energy of the reverse. Let's say this reaction can go in the exact opposite way. So now we're gonna go, instead of reactants to products, we're gonna go products back to reactants. So where's our new starting point now? We'll be with the products, which is C and D over here at 20. Good. Um, and we have to go all the way back up the hill to go in the reverse direction, okay. right? So all the way back up to 100 again. Exactly. Okay, so, so this entire region right there. Good, so we're gonna label that EA reverse. It's 100 minus 20, so it would be 80 kilojoules. Now this would kind of be a lame roller coaster because we have to go back up, click, 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 click for a really long time, and then we drop, but uh, we don't drop as much as we did in the exothermic direction. Okay. All right, we're gonna look at a different potential energy diagram. You still ready, Fu? I still am. All right, let's take a look at this one. This one is shaped a little bit differently than the first one. How do you think it's different? Um, well, it looks very similar, um, but I can see that this one starts low and ends higher. Good, so what type of reaction is this gonna be? Uh, well, in order to end higher, I need to take in more energy, so this would be endothermic. Good, let's label this endothermic. All right, now we went through those regions last time pretty carefully, okay. so I'm gonna kinda let you take over here a little bit, and I'll just tell you what's a label, and you're gonna show me where it is. How's that sound? Perfect, let's All do right. it. Let's start with the heat of reactants. Heat of reactants is where I start, so that's right here. So that's H sub R. Very good, and it would be 50 kilojoules. How about the heat of products? That's at the end here, and that is H sub P. Good, and it looks like it's at 100. So what about delta H, the heat of reaction? Where would that be? That's always in between those two. So anywhere in between, so that's uh, delta H. Good, and what sign would it have for an endothermic reaction? Well, it's always final minus initial for any change, and the final is 100, the initial is 50, so 100 minus 50 is still positive 50, so this would be positive. Very good. All right, let's do the heat of the activated complex next. Okay, so activated complex, that's at the top here. That's all the way to the top, um, and all the way to the bottom, right there. Good, let's label that HAC. And that looks like a value of 250 kilojoules. Now next we're gonna do the activation energy of the forward. So okay. where would that be? Well, that's the click, click, click up the hill going from left to right for forward. So that must be from the reactants up to that activated complex. What do I label that as again? That's EA with okay. F in parentheses for forward. And it looks like for our value, it's 250 minus 50, so 200. By the way, don't mix up activation energy and heat of the activated complex. They're pretty similar, uh, but as you were saying, you know, we're going up the roller coaster, right? So we're not starting at zero for the activation energy, we're starting wherever our reactants are, whereas the hill, we do start from zero for our heat of activated complex. Okay. All right, one more region. What about the activation energy of the reverse? 
All right, so let's click, click, click in the reverse reaction. So from the top again of that hill, but then down to my products here, um, going backwards. Exactly, good. We're gonna label that EA with R in parentheses for reverse. That looks like the value here would be 250 minus 100, so 150 kilojoules. Nice job. Okay. Let's talk about the effect of a catalyst. A catalyst, in changing the reaction mechanism, lowers the heat of the activated complex and thus the activation energy. Notice that the heats of the reactants and the products and the heat of reaction do not change with the addition of a catalyst. So if you take a look at the potential energy diagram, we've got two lines, one that shows it without a catalyst and one that shows it catalyzed. So again, both of these lines start and end in the same spot. This is just like the analogy we said for you going from chemistry class to the field house. You're still gonna start and end in the same spot. The difference is the pathway you took. So obviously when I catalyze this, I've got very different pathways. The difference also is that since it's an easier pathway, it took less energy. So that energy to get there was my activated complex or my activation energy, which gets lowered. Or guys, if you prefer, per, 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 hurdles. So we've got our high hurdle. It's really hard to get over. It takes a lot of energy. Then we add the catalyst. It's like getting a lower hurdle. So it's a lot easier to jump over. It doesn't take as much activation energy to get to the final products. You try. Using the potential energy diagram shown, determine the values for each of the following in kilojoules. The heat of the reactants, the heat of the products, heat of reaction, activation energy of the forward catalyzed reaction, and activation energy of the reverse uncatalyzed reaction. Well, that's going to do it for this episode on the role of energy in reactions. Later, nerds! In the, in the neck, sorry. That was good. Like, just a stumbling was bad. <laughs> no, the stumbling was good? Just a stumbling. Just a stumbling. Good. No, the way you ordered it was yeah, perfect. Right. I forgot it already. I'm your host. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Shu. Sorry. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Coming At Ya. I said that weird. I'm... Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm... Uh, let's look at... Let's... Sorry. No. If we take a look at the image... Well, now that it was so, <laughs> you can. So broly. Ugh, that ending. Just the so ending, fun. it was so good. We're gonna go, sorry, let me. Taking a look at our image. It was good. I think that was pretty perfect. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Walkie Chalk. No more straight knees, chalky hands, or sore back. Install one on Grandma's cane and never lose her again. Walkie Chalk is not responsible for any lost grandmothers. Results may vary. But we never off, or we zone to the brick of dawn. A C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.